So when Core from Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver called me up and said, I've got another Safari build for you to drive and do a video on, I'm like, oh, another Cayenne. He goes, no, a Range Rover Sport supercharged with over 500 horsepower. I'm like, well, that sounds like fun. Now, if you haven't been following along, I've had a chance to drive two Safari build Cayenne. So basically you take a first gen Cayenne, you raise it up, you put on skid plates underneath, you raise the suspension, put the big tires on, and they're quite capable off-road. So when I said, what's the deal with this one? He said, it's slightly different. This is what we're calling an urban assault vehicle. A little bit more subdued, especially with the livery. Of course, the vehicle's black. Then instead of putting the Camel Trophy stickers on in white and really having it pop, they went for the matte black look, which really does look cool. Then you raise the vehicle up. You have the large all-terrain tires with an extra one on the roof because they're so big, it won't fit underneath the vehicle. And that's what we have here. In addition, it's got the blacked out grill. It's got a special exhaust, which I'll fire up for you in just a moment. And it just looks cool. Uh, these vehicles now have gotten to the point where they've depreciated. You can do something fun like this and have something that isn't too crazy expensive, but still has all of the drivability. Now, one of the things, the big difference between those first gen Cayennes, which are really quite capable off-road, and this is a Range Rover Sport, a Land Rover, any of the Range Rovers come from the factory ready to go off-road. So we'll get inside. We'll take it for a spin and I'll explain how all of that works. So those first-gen Cayennes that uh, have been made into safari vehicles are great off-road. The one sort of weak spot in them is the interiors really do look quite dated. So this is a 2011 model. The last first-gen Cayenne was made up until 2010. But when you get in this, it looks more modern, more up-to-date, more current than those first-gen ones do. Uh, this is a local British Columbia car. Actually, Core from Core Motor Cars told me he sold this brand new in 2011. It's had one owner and it's got 99,000 kilometers on it. That's 64,000 miles. So it's a baby. Uh, it's been well looked after. And when we drive it in a second, it runs really, really well. So these vehicles already have a lot of capability built into them. This has a two and a half inch lift that's been added to it. You get the AT Terra Grappler GT2 tires on the outside, a 20 inch spare wheel, and Flowmaster mufflers have been added to replace the original equipment muffler. So it does have mufflers, but it is good and loud. It snaps, it cracks, it pops, it sounds cool. So with that, we'll buckle up and go for a spin. So the great thing about doing this to an older utility vehicle, and it's a trend that's taking off, all you need to do is look on YouTube or online for different kinds of builds for Cayennes and Touregs, and of course for Range Rovers like this, is the different ways you can do it are endless. It really comes down to what you want and your personal taste. So when I picked this up, I said to Cora, I said, why didn't you go with like a bush bar in the front with the lights and all the stuff that you did with the kind he said no I want this to be more of a everyday kind of sleeper look well not really sleeper because you've got the livery on the outside of it but not as aggressive somebody that could drive this every single day but have a vehicle that has all the capability that's inherent to the brand uh, so all of that stuff remains so even though it has a two and a half inch lift the air suspension is still capable of raising and lowering so I'm showing you now going to its highest position and then all the way down to its lowest position. So all of that functionality with the air suspension is already here. And then when you drive it on the road in its normal setting that I have it now, even with the big tires, it's really comfortable. Now with Land Rovers and Range Rovers, you also get the terrain management system that has basically been swiped and used throughout the industry. Because you've got to remember who owned Land Rover over the years. Well, BMW did than Ford did, and those technologies have been borrowed and placed in other vehicles. But Land Rover really was the one that pioneered all this stuff. You get all the different terrain settings, whether it's rocks or sand or what have you, and you have hill descent control, and that now is being borrowed by everybody in the industry, but this is the originator. Now the other difference between those Cayennes and this is what's under the hood. So the two Cayennes that I had a chance to drive had the early 3.2 liter VR6 engines. Not the most powerful, but very reliable, and they don't have this. 
a five liter supercharged engine under the hood with 510 horsepower. And this thing, even though it is big, it's heavy and is raised up now, is still very, very quick. Did you notice, you know, when you get into the corners, you have a higher center of gravity? But that's the case for any kind of off-road vehicle. It's a bit of a compromise. You know, it's interesting getting a chance to drive, uh, you know, new off-road capable vehicles like a G-Wagon or a Jeep Rubicon or anything like that. And I always say when I drive brand new models, people who go off-road, they don't buy them brand new. They buy older vehicles, modify them to exactly their taste. And that's exactly what you're getting with this. You're getting an older vehicle that has been modified, hopefully to your taste. Uh, but if you want, you could build one exactly the way you want. Most people getting a G-Wagon at 150000 and going off-road, not very likely. Taking something like this, already heavily depreciated, making it your own, and then going off-road, now that's what most people do. So thanks again to Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver. The website's really easy to remember. It's corecars.com. I'll put the link below. Uh, yeah, they're doing more of these vehicles, and there's more Cayennes in the works. This is certainly a different kind of buyer. Actually, of the two, I prefer driving this just because it's got so much more power and it's got the air suspension and it's really, really comfortable for everyday situations, but already baked in from the factory is all that off-road capability. It's cool. People seem to like this idea of taking older vehicles that have depreciated to the point where you can have some fun with them and making safari-type vehicles. It's a trend I don't think is going to stop. It's one I like, and here's the latest.